Islands, the Phantoms would suddenly find themselves descended upon by ground-controlled supersonic MiG-21s that would attack and then disappear before any retaliation could be mounted. The Gwen Swat was a North Vietnamese MiG-21 pilot during the war. Compared to the Phantom, the MiG-21 is superior in terms of its flying characteristics. I testify to it being very good. For six months between April and October of 1972, I hit six American planes. Four were F-4 Phantoms. Still, many MiG-21 pilots found themselves within the sights of a Phantom. The MiG-21 is one of the more enduring images of the Cold War skies, and some have called it the symbol of Russian military power. It was Mikoyan's last design. He died in 1970. And when his partner Mikhail Gordievich retired, the new chief designer became R.A. Belyakov. The next generation of Soviet fighters would bear his mark. Each new design is a complex effort between workers, designers and engineers, design bureaus, factories, laboratories, and test facilities. We say that there are two big achievements, technology and the people who have developed in the process. Even before the MiG-21 had gone into production, the Mikoyan Design Bureau planned for a faster, more powerful interceptor, one with greater range and more powerful radar. It also had to be able to carry heavier war loads, all of which demanded more powerful but heavier engines and even longer airstrips. The challenge, an aircraft that could operate from a short, unmade runway and achieve supersonic flight. Was flight tested in the winter of 1966. The resulting production aircraft was designated the MiG-23. It achieved many of its design demands by using variable geometry wings. With the wings at a 16 degree angle, it could land and take off from very short airfields. In the 45 degree angle, it had maximum maneuverability and could engage in dogfights. In the 72 degree angle, it could reach a maximum speed of 1,553 miles an hour, 250 miles an hour faster than the MiG-21. Another design change, the side-mounted air intakes. This left more room for internal fuel tanks and better avionics, which could now be mounted in the nose cone. The 23 was the first MiG with a head-up display system and a laser rangefinder. Its powerful high-lock look-down radar probably was developed from American units captured during the Vietnam War. It entered service in the early 1970s. With its infrared homing air-to-air -air missiles, the MiG-23 became the mainstay of the Warsaw Pact Air Forces throughout that decade. 500 were built each year. It saw action in the Iran-Iraq War and again in 1982 during the conflict between Syria and Israel. Even though they were faster and more heavily armed, MiG-23 suffered heavy losses against the more agile Israeli Kiefers and American-built F-16s. The ground attack derivative of the MiG-23 was the MiG-27. It was cheaper to produce than the 23, but with bigger engines, it could carry greater warloads. It had additional cockpit armor, a distinctive claw at the wing, and self-guided air-to-ground missiles.
using TV imaging equipment, it could attack small ground targets. From the start of the Soviet Union's war with Afghanistan in 1979, MiG-23s and 27s were used successfully until they came up against the United States shoulder-launched Stinger anti-aircraft missile. Even as these radical designs were being developed, the Mikoyan Design Bureau and its new head, R.A. Belyakov, vowed to push the more conventional Delta Wing design to its limit. The resulting prototype used the already proven side-mounted air intakes, but it pioneered twin vertical tails to improve directional stability at high angles of attack. In the fall of 1967, this plane reached a speed of nearly 2,000 miles an hour and zoomed to an incredible 123,525 feet. It was the MiG-25 Foxbat, a Mach 2.8 interceptor designed to meet the threat of nuclear bombers, particularly the supersonic B-58. Exaggerated speculation about the Foxbat caused near hysteria in the West in the 1970s. It probably pushed forward the development of the U.S. Air Force's F-15 Eagle. The MiG-25 Foxbat had valve technology radar, which lacked the sophistication of Western equipment but could burn through the defenses of the enemy's electronic countermeasures. Ground stations could relay information and commands directly to the cockpit, and in turn, receive and analyze information from the aircraft and its missiles. In 1976, a MiG pilot defected and landed his Foxbat in Japan. The intelligence gained from this plane cleared away many of the myths and fears that surrounded this formidable aircraft. But the MiG-25 is still considered the fastest combat aircraft in the world. Later models reportedly have been tracked at Mach 3.2. At three times the speed of sound, temperatures on an aircraft's fuselage can vary by more than 500 degrees Fahrenheit. New metal alloys had to be developed to even higher tolerances. The technology needed to push an aircraft this far demanded a new level of Soviet industrial competence. Measuring, testing, and quality control had to be greatly improved. Despite the success of the MiG-25 Foxbat, a new danger from the West appeared. By flying below the coverage of ground radar, American bombers, or even cruise missiles, could fly over the entire Soviet Union and not be detected. The Mikoyan Design Bureau's response was the MiG-31 Foxhound, a ground attack and low-level interceptor derivative of the MiG-25. The MiG-31 Foxhound's onboard data processing and radar technology were a great advance over anything the Soviets had before. The weapon control system consisted of an entirely new type of radar, which overcame the drawbacks of traditional systems. systems, a radar beam covers about two degrees of arc and scans relatively slowly across the sky by mechanical movement of the radar dish 